Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer narrated Abu Huraira. I heard Allah's Messenger, P. B. U. H. saying, We, Muslims, are the last, to come. But, will be, the foremost on the day of resurrection though the former nations were given the holy scriptures before us. And this was their day, Friday, the celebration of which was made compulsory for them but they differed about it. So Allah gave us the guidance for it, Friday, and all the other people are behind us in this respect. The Jews, holy day is tomorrow, that is Saturday, and the Christians, is the day after tomorrow, that is Sunday. Sahih al-Bukhari 876 Reference 11 Hadith 1 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abdullah bin Umar Allah's Messenger, P. B. U. H. said, Any one of you attending the Friday prayers should take a bath. Sahih al Bukhari 877, Reference 11, Hadith 2. Sahih al Bukhari, Friday Prayer narrated Ibn Umar. While Umar bin al Khattab was standing and delivering the sermon on a Friday, one of the companions of the Prophet, who was one of the foremost Muhahirs, emigrants, came. Umar said to him, What is the time now? He replied, I was busy and could not go back to my house till I heard the Adan. I did not perform more than the ablution. Thereupon Umar said to him, Did you perform only the ablution although you know that Allah's Messenger, P. B. U. H. used to order us to take a bath, on Fridays. Sahih al-Bukhari 878 Reference 11 Hadith 3 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri Allah's Messenger P. B. U. H. said, The taking of a bath on Friday is compulsory for every male Muslim who has attained the age of puberty. Sahih al-Bukhari 879 Reference 11 Hadith 4 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Sa'id I testify that Allah's Messenger said, The taking of a bath on Friday is compulsory for every male Muslim who has attained the age of puberty and, also, the cleaning of his teeth with siwak, and the using of perfume if it is available. Amr, a sub-narrator, said, I confirm that the taking of a bath is compulsory, but as for the siwak and the using of perfume, Allah knows better whether it is obligatory or not, but according to the hadith it is as above. Sahih al-Bukhari 880 Reference 11 Hadith 5 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger, P. B. U. H. said, any person who takes a bath on Friday like the bath of Janaba and then goes for the prayer, in the first hour that is early, it is as if he had sacrificed a camel, in Allah's cause. And whoever goes in the second hour it is as if he had sacrificed a cow. And whoever goes in the third hour, then it is as if he had sacrificed a horned ram. And if one goes in the fourth hour, then it is as if he had sacrificed a hen. And whoever goes in the fifth hour then it is as if he had offered an egg. When the imam comes out, that is starts delivering the kutbah. The angels present themselves to listen to the kutbah. Sahih al-Bukhari 881 Reference 11 Hadith 6 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Huraira While Umar bin al-Khattab was delivering the kutbah on a Friday. A man entered, the mosque. Umar asked him, What has detained you from the prayer? The man said, It was only that when I heard the Adan I performed ablution, for the prayer. On that Umar said, Did you not hear the Prophet saying, Any one of you going out for the Jamu'a prayer should take a bath? Sahih al-Bukhari 882 Reference 11 Hadith 7 Sahih al-Bukhari 
Friday Prayer Narrated Salman al-Farsi, the Prophet, p. b. u. h. said, Whoever takes a bath on Friday, purifies himself as much as he can, then uses his hair, oil or perfumes himself with the scent of his house, then proceeds for the Jamu'a prayer, and does not separate two persons sitting together in the mosque, then prays as much as Allah has written for him and then remains silent while the Imam is delivering the Qutbah. His sins in between the present and the last Friday would be forgiven. Sahih al-Bukhari 883 Reference 11 Hadith 8 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Tawis I said to Ibn Abbas, the people are narrating that the Prophet said, Take a bath on Friday and wash your heads. That is take a thorough bath, even though you were not Junab and use perfume. On that Ibn Abbas replied, I know about the bath, that is it is essential but I do not know about the perfume, that is whether it is essential or not. Sahih al-Bukhari 884 Reference 11 Hadith 9 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Tawis Ibn Abbas mentioned the statement of the Prophet regarding the taking of a bath on Friday and then I asked him whether the Prophet P. B. U. H. had ordered perfume or hair oil to be used if they could be found in one's house. He, Ibn Abbas, replied that he did not know about it. Sahih al-Bukhari 885 Reference 11 Hadith 10 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abdullah bin Umar Umar bin al-Khattab saw a silken cloak being sold at the gate of the mosque and said to Allah's Apostle, I wish you would buy this to wear on Fridays and also on occasions of the arrivals of the delegations. Allah's Messenger replied, This will be worn by a person who will have no share, reward, in the hereafter. Later on similar cloaks were given to Allah's Messenger and he gave one of them to Umar bin al-Khattab. On that Umar said, O Allah's Messenger, you have given me this cloak although on the cloak of Adarid, a cloak merchant who was selling that silken cloak at the gate of the mosque. You passed such and such a remark. Allah's messenger replied, I have not given you this to wear. And so Umar bin al-Khattab gave it to his pagan brother in Mecca to wear. Sahih al-Bukhari 886 Reference 11 Hadith 11 Sahih al-Bukhari, Friday Prayer narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger said, If I had not found it hard for my followers or the people, I would have ordered them to clean their teeth with siwak for every prayer. Sahih al-Bukhari 887 Reference 11 Hadith 12 Sahih al-Bukhari, Friday Prayer narrated Anas. Allah's Messenger said, I have told you repeatedly to use the siwak. The Prophet put emphasis on the use of the siwak. Sahih al-Bukhari 888 Reference 11 Hadith 13 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Hudhaifa When the Prophet P. B. U. H. got up at night for the night prayer, he used to clean his mouth. Sahih al-Bukhari 889 Reference 11 Hadith 14 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Aisha Abdur Rahman bin Abi Bakr came holding a siwak with which he was cleaning his teeth. Allah's Apostle looked at him. I requested Abdur Rahman to give the siwak to me and after he gave it to me I divided it, chewed it and gave it to Allah's Messenger. Then he cleaned his teeth with it and, at that time, he was resting against my chest. Sahih al-Bukhari 890 Reference 11 Hadith 15 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Huraira The Prophet used to recite the following in the Fajr prayer of Friday. Aleph. Lamb. Mim. Tanzil. Sarada's Sajda No. 32 and Hal Ada Allah al-Insani, 
that is Surah Ad-Dar number 76. Sahih al-Bukhari 891 reference 11 hadith 16. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Ibn Abbas. The first Jamu'ah prayer which was offered after a Jamu'ah prayer offered at the Mosque of Allah's Apostle took place in the Mosque of the tribe of Abdul Qais at Jawathi in Bahrain. Sahih al-Bukhari 892 reference 11 hadith 17. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Ibn Umar. I heard Allah's messenger saying, All of you are guardians. Yunus said, Ruzayk bin Hukaim wrote to Ibn Shihab while I was with him at Wadi al-Qura saying, Shall I lead the Jamu'ah prayer? Ruzayk was working on the land, that is farming, and there was a group of Sudanese people and some others with him. Ruzayk was then the governor of AILA. Ibn Shihab wrote, to Ruzayk, ordering him to lead the Jamu'ah prayer and telling him that Salim told him that Abdullah bin Umar had said, I heard Allah's apostle saying, all of you are guardians and responsible for your wards and the things under your care. The imam, that is ruler, is the guardian of his subjects and is responsible for them and a man is the guardian of his family and is responsible for them. A woman is the guardian of her husband's house and is responsible for it. A servant is the guardian of his master's belongings and is responsible for them. I thought that he also said, a man is the guardian of his father's property Sahih al-Bukhari 893 reference 11 hadith 18. Sahih al-Bukhari, Friday prayer and is responsible for it. All of you are guardians and responsible for your wards and the things under your care. Sahih al-Bukhari 893 reference 11 hadith 18. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Abdullah bin Umar. I heard Allah's messenger saying, Any one of you coming for the Jamu'ah prayer should take a bath. Sahih al-Bukhari 894 reference 11 hadith 19. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri. Allah's messenger said, the taking of a bath on Friday is compulsory for every Muslim who has attained the age of puberty. Sahih al-Bukhari 895 reference 11 hadith 20. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's messenger said we are the last to come amongst the nations, but will be the foremost on the day of resurrection. They were given the Holy Scripture before us and we were given the Quran after them. And this was the day, Friday, about which they differed and Allah gave us the guidance, for that. So tomorrow, that is Saturday, is the Jews, day, and the day after tomorrow, that is Sunday, is the Christians. The Prophet, P. B. U. H. remained silent, for a while, and then said, it is obligatory for every Muslim that he should take a bath once in seven days, when he should wash his head and body. Sahih al-Bukhari 896, 897 reference 11 hadith 21. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Abu Huraira through different narrators that the Prophet said, It is Allah's right on every Muslim that he should take a bath, at least, once in seven days. Sahih al-Bukhari 898 reference 11 hadith 22. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Ibn Umar. The Prophet, P. B. U. H. said, allow women to go to the mosques at night. Sahih al-Bukhari 899 reference 11 hadith 23. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Ibn Umar. One of the wives of Umar, bin al-Khattab, used to offer the Fajr and the Aisha prayer in congregation in the mosque. She was asked why she had come out for the prayer as she knew that Umar disliked it, and he has great gaira, self-respect. She replied, What prevents him from stopping me from this act? 
The other replied, The statement of Allah's messenger. Do not stop Allah's women slaves from going to Allah's mosques prevents him. Sahih al-Bukhari 900 Reference 11 Hadith 24 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday prayer narrated Muhammad peace be upon him bin Sirim. On a rainy day Ibn Abbas said to his Mu'ad Dhin, after saying, Ashhadu anna Muhammad peace be upon Hyman Rasulullah. I testify that Muhammad peace be upon him is Allah's messenger. Do not say hey alas salat. Come for the prayer. But say pray in your houses. The man did so. But the people disliked it. Ibn Abbas said, it was done by one who was much better than I, that is the Prophet, P. B. U. H. No doubt, the Jamu'ah prayer is compulsory but I dislike to put you to task by bringing you out walking in mud and slush. Sahih al-Bukhari 901 Reference 11 Hadith 25 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday prayer narrated Aisha sad face. The wife of the Prophet. The people used to come from their abodes and from Al-Awali. That is outskirts of Medina up to a distance of four miles or more from Medina. They used to pass through dust and used to be drenched with sweat and covered with dust. So sweat used to trickle from them. One of them came to Allah's messenger who was in my house. The Prophet said to him, I wish that you keep yourself clean on this day of yours. That is take a bath. Sahih al-Bukhari 902 Reference 11 Hadith 26 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday prayer narrated Yahya bin Sa'id. I asked Amra about taking a bath on Fridays. She replied, Aisha said, The people used to work, for their livelihood, and whenever they went for the Jamu'ah prayer, they used to go to the mosque in the same shape as they had been in work. So they were asked to take a bath on Friday. Sahih al-Bukhari 903 Reference 11 Hadith 27 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday prayer narrated Anas bin Malik. The Prophet used to offer the Jamu'ah prayer immediately after midday. Sahih al-Bukhari 904 Reference 11 Hadith 28 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Anas bin Malik We used to offer the Jamu'ah prayer early and then have an afternoon nap. Sahih al-Bukhari 905 Reference 11 Hadith 29 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Anas bin Malik the Prophet used to offer the prayer earlier if it was very cold, and if it was very hot he used to delay the prayer, that is the Jamu'ah prayer. Sahih al-Bukhari 906 Reference 11 Hadith 30 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Abs I heard the Prophet saying, Anyone whose feet are covered with dust in Allah's cause, shall be saved by Allah from the hell fire. Sahih al-Bukhari 907 Reference 11 Hadith 31 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Huraira Heard Allah's Messenger S. P. B. U. H. Saying, If the prayer is started do not run for it but just walk for it calmly and pray whatever you get, and complete whatever is missed. Sahih al-Bukhari 908 Reference 11 Hadith 32 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada on the authority of his father, the Prophet, P. B. U. H. said, Do not stand up, for prayer, unless you see me, and observe calmness and solemnity. Sahih al-Bukhari 909 Reference 11 Hadith 33 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Salman al-Farsi Allah's Messenger, P. B. U. H. said, Anyone who takes a bath on Friday and cleans himself as much as he can and puts oil, on his hair, or scents himself, 
and then proceeds for the prayer and does not force his way between two persons, assembled in the mosque for the Friday prayer, and prays as much as is written for him and remains quiet when the imam delivers the khutbah. All his sins in between the present and the last Friday will be forgiven. Sahih al-Bukhari 910 Reference 11 Hadith 34 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer narrated Ibn Jarai. I heard Nazi saying, Ibn Umar, said, The Prophet forbade that a man should make another man to get up to sit in his place. I said to Nafi, Is it for Jamua prayer only? He replied, For Jamua prayer and any other, prayer. Sahih al-Bukhari 911 Reference 11 Hadith 35 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated as Sayyid bin Yazid. In the lifetime of the Prophet, Abu Bakr and Umar, the Adan for the Jamua prayer used to be pronounced when the Imam sat on the pulpit. But during the Caliphate of Uthman when the Muslims increased in number, a third Adan at Az Zora was added. Abu Abdullah said, Az Zora is a place in the market of Medina. Sahih al-Bukhari 912 Reference 11 Hadith 36 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated as Sayyid bin Yazid. The person who increased the number of Adans for the Jamu'ah prayers to three was Uthman bin Affan and it was when the number of the Muslim people of Medina had increased. In the lifetime of the Prophet there was only one Mu'ad Dhin and the Adan used to be pronounced only after the Imam had taken his seat, that is on the pulpit. Sahih al-Bukhari 913 Reference 11 Hadith 37 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Umama bin Sal bin Hunayf. I heard Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, repeating the statements of the Adan while he was sitting on the pulpit. When the Mu'ad Dhin pronounced the Adan saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Mu'awiyah said, Allah Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And when the Mu'ad Dhin said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, I testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, Mu'awiyah said, and, Sadu, I. When he said, Ashhadu Anna Muhammad peace be upon Hyman Rasulullah, I testify that Muhammad peace be upon him as Allah's apostle, Muawiyah said, and, Sadu, I. When the Adan was finished, Muawiyah said, O people, when the Mu'ad Dhin pronounced the Adan I heard Allah's messenger on this very pulpit saying what you have just heard me saying. Sahih al-Bukhari 914 Reference 11 Hadith 38 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated as Sayyid bin Yazid the first. Uthman bin Affan introduced the second Adan on Fridays when the number of the people in the mosque increased. Previously the Adan on Fridays used to be pronounced only after the Imam had taken his seat, on the pulpit. Sahih al-Bukhari 915 Reference 11 Hadith 39 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated as Zuri. I heard as Sayyid bin Yazid, saying, In the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, and Abu Bakr and Umar, the Adan for the Jamu'ah prayer used to be pronounced after the Imam had taken his seat on the pulpit. But when the people increased in number during the Caliphate of Uthman, he introduced a third Adan, on Friday for the Jamu'ah prayer and it was pronounced at as Zora and that new state of affairs remained so in the succeeding years. Sahih al-Bukhari 916 Reference 11 Hadith 40 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Abu Hazim bin Dinar. Some people went to Saul bin Sa'di as Sa'idi and told him that they had different opinions regarding the wood of the pulpit. They asked him about it and he said, by Allah, I know of what wood the pulpit was made, and no doubt I saw it on the very first day when Allah's messenger took his seat on it. Allah's messenger sent for such and such an Ansari woman, and Saul mentioned her name, and said to her, 
Order your slave carpenter to prepare for me some pieces of wood, that is pulpit, on which I may sit at the time of addressing the people. So she ordered her slave carpenter and he made it from the tamarisk of the forest and brought it to the woman. The woman sent that pulpit to Allah's messenger who ordered it to be placed here. Then I saw Allah's messenger praying on it and then bowed on it. Then he stepped back, got down and prostrated on the ground near the foot of the pulpit and again ascended the pulpit. After finishing the prayer he faced the people Sahih al-Bukhari 917 reference 11 hadith 41. Sahih al-Bukhari, Friday prayer and said, I have done this so that you may follow me and learn the way I pray. Sahih al-Bukhari 917 reference 11 hadith 41. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Habir bin Abdullah. The Prophet used to stand by a stem of a date palm tree, while delivering a sermon. When the pulpit was placed for him we heard that stem crying like a pregnant she-camel till the Prophet got down from the pulpit and placed his hand over it. Sahih al-Bukhari 918 reference 11 hadith 42. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Salim. My father said, I heard the Prophet delivering the kutbah on the pulpit and he said, Whoever comes for the Jamu'a prayer should take a bath, before coming. Sahih al-Bukhari 919 reference 11 hadith 43. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Ibn Umar. The Prophet. P. B. U. H used to deliver the kuba while standing and then he would sit, then stand again as you do now a days. Sahih al-Bukhari 920 reference 11 hadith 44. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri. One day the Prophet sat on the pulpit and we sat around him. Sahih al-Bukhari 921 reference 11 hadith 45. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Fatima bint al-Mundir. Asma bint Abi Bakr as Sadiq said. I went to Aisha and the people were offering salat. I asked her, what is wrong with the people? She pointed towards the sky with her head. I asked her, is there a sign? Aisha nodded with her head meaning yes. Asma added, Allah's messenger prolonged the salat to such an extent that I fainted. There was a water skin by my side and I opened it and poured some water on my head. When Allah's messenger finished Salat, and the solar eclipse had cleared, the Prophet addressed the people and praised Allah as he deserves and said, Amma Badu. Asma further said, Some Ansari women started talking, so I turned to them in order to make them quiet. I asked Aisha what the Prophet had said. Aisha said. He said, I have seen things at this place of mine which were never shown to me before. I have seen, even paradise and hell. And, no doubt it has been revealed to me that you, people, will be put in trial in your graves like or nearly Sahih al-Bukhari 922 reference 11 hadith 46. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer like the trial of Masi ad Dajjal. The angels will come to every one of you and ask him, What do you know about this man, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him? The faithful believer or firm believer, Hashem was in doubt which word the Prophet used, will say, He is Allah's messenger and he is Muhammad peace be upon him who came to us with clear evidences and guidance. So we believed him, accepted his teachings and followed and trusted his teaching. Then the angels will tell him to sleep, in peace, as they have come to know that he was a believer. But the hypocrite or a doubtful person, Hashem is not sure as to which word the Prophet used, will be asked what he knew about this man, Prophet Muhammad. He will say, I do not know but I heard the people saying something, about him. So I said the same Hashem added. Fatima told me that she remembered that narration completely by heart except that she said about the hypocrite or a doubtful person that he will be punished severely. 
Sahih al-Bukhari 922 reference 11 hadith 46. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday prayer narrated Amr bin Tagli. Some property or something was brought to Allah's messenger and he distributed it. He gave to some men and ignored the others. Later he got the news of his being admonished by those whom he had ignored. So he glorified and praised Allah and said, Amma Badu. By Allah, I may give to a man and ignore another, although the one whom I ignore is more beloved to me than the one whom I give. But I give to some people as I feel that they have no patience and no contentment in their hearts and I leave those who are patient and self-content with the goodness and wealth which Allah has put into their hearts and Amr bin Taglib is one of them. Amr added, By Allah, those words of Allah's Apostle are more beloved to me than the best red camels. Sahih al-Bukhari 923 Reference 11 Hadith 47 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer Narrated Aisha. Once in the middle of the night Allah's Messenger. P. B. U. H. went out and prayed in the mosque and some men prayed with him. The next morning the people spoke about it and so more people gathered and prayed with him, in the second night. They circulated the news in the morning, and so, on the third night the number of people increased greatly. Allah's Messenger, P. B. U. H. came out and they prayed behind him. On the fourth night the mosque was overwhelmed by the people till it could not accommodate them. Allah's Messenger came out only for the Fajr prayer and when he finished the prayer, he faced the people and recited Tasha Hud. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that Muhammad peace be upon him as his apostle. And then said, Amma Badu. Verily your presence, in the mosque at night, was not hidden from me, but I was afraid that this prayer, prayer of Tahajid, might be made compulsory and you might not be able to carry it out. Sahih al-Bukhari 924 Reference 11 Hadith 48 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Hamid as saw IDI. One Night Allah's Messenger. P. B. U. H. stood up after the prayer and recited Tasha Hud and then praised Allah as he deserved and said, Amma Badu. Sahih al-Bukhari 925 Reference 11 Hadith 49 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer narrated al-Miswar bin Makrama. Once Allah's Messenger got up for delivering the Qutbah and I heard him after Tasha Hud saying Amma Badu. Sahih al-Bukhari 926 Reference 11 Hadith 50 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer narrated Ibn Abbas. Once the Prophet ascended the pulpit and it was the last gathering in which he took part. He was covering his shoulder with a big cloak and binding his head with an oily bandage. He glorified and praised Allah and said, O people, come to me. So the people came and gathered around him and he then said, Amma Badu. From now onward the Ansar will decrease and other people will increase. So anybody who becomes a ruler of the followers of Muhammad peace be upon him and has the power to harm or benefit people then he should accept the good from the benevolent amongst them, Ansar, and overlook the faults of their wrongdoers. Sahih al-Bukhari 927 Reference 11 Hadith 51 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer Narrated Abdullah ibn Umar. The Prophet used to deliver two kutbas and sit in between them. Sahih al-Bukhari 928 Reference 11 Hadith 52 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, When it is a Friday, the angels stand at the gate of the mosque and keep on writing the names of the persons coming to the mosque in succession according to their arrivals. The example of the one who enters the mosque in the earliest hour is that of one offering a camel, in sacrifice. The one coming next is like one offering a cow and then a ram and then a chicken and then an egg respectively. 
When the Imam comes out for Jamu'ah prayer, they, that is angels, fold their papers and listen to the Qutbah. Sahih al-Bukhari 929 Reference 11 Hadith 53 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday prayer narrated Habir bin Abdullah. A person entered the mosque while the Prophet was delivering the Qutbah on a Friday. The Prophet said to him, Have you prayed? The man replied in the negative. The Prophet said, Get up and pray two rak'at. Sahih al-Bukhari 930 Reference 11 Hadith 54 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Habir A man entered the mosque while the Prophet was delivering the Qutbah. The Prophet said to him, Have you prayed? The man replied in the negative. The Prophet said, Pray to Rak'at. Sahih al-Bukhari 931 Reference 11 Hadith 55 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Anas while the Prophet was delivering the Qutbah on a Friday, a man stood up and said, Oh, Allah's Apostle. The livestock and the sheep are dying, so pray to Allah for rain. So he, the Prophet, raised both his hands and invoked Allah, for it. Sahih al-Bukhari 932 Reference 11 Hadith 56 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday prayer narrated Anas bin Malik. Once in the lifetime of the Prophet. P. B. U. H. The people were afflicted with drought, famine. While the Prophet was delivering the Qutbah on a Friday, a Bedouin stood up and said, O, oh, Allah's Messenger. Our possessions are being destroyed and the children are hungry. Please invoke Allah, for rain. So the Prophet raised his hands. At that time there was not a trace of cloud in the sky. By him in whose hands my soul is as soon as he lowered his hands, clouds gathered like mountains, and before he got down from the pulpit, I saw the rain falling on the beard of the prophet. It rained that day, the next day, the third day, the fourth day till the next Friday. The same Bedouin or another man stood up and said, O oh Allah's messenger! The houses have collapsed. Our possessions and livestock have been drowned. Please invoke Allah, to protect us. So the Prophet raised both his hands and said, O oh Allah, round about us and not on us. So, in whatever direction he pointed Sahih al-Bukhari 933 reference 11 hadith 57. Sahih al-Bukhari, Friday prayer with his hands, the clouds dispersed and cleared away and Medina's sky became clear as a hole in between the clouds. The valley of Kanat remained flooded for one month, none came from outside but talked about the abundant rain. Sahih al-Bukhari 933 Reference 11 Hadith 57 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger P. B. U. H. said, when the Imam is delivering the Qutbah, and you ask your companion to keep quiet and listen, then no doubt you have done an evil act. Sahih al-Bukhari 934 Reference 11 Hadith 58 Sahih al-Bukhari, Friday Prayer Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, P. B. U. H. talked about Friday and said, there is an hour, opportune time, on Friday and if a Muslim gets it while praying and asks something from Allah, then Allah will definitely meet his demand. And he, the Prophet, pointed out the shortness of that time with his hands. Sahih al-Bukhari 935 Reference 11 Hadith 59 Sahih al-Bukhari, Friday Prayer Narrated Habir bin Abdullah while we were praying, Jamu'a Qutbah and prayer, with the Prophet, P. B. U. H. Some camels loaded with food, arrived, from Sham. The people diverted their attention towards the camels, and left the mosque, and only twelve persons remained with the Prophet. 
So this verse was revealed. But when they see some bargain or some amusement, they disperse headlong to it, and leave you standing. 62.11. Sahih al-Bukhari 936 Reference 11 Hadith 60. Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer Narrated Abdullah bin Umar. Allah's Messenger used to pray two rak'at before the Zuhr prayer and two rak'at after it. He also used to pray two rak'at after the Maghrib prayer in his house, and two rak'at after the Aisha prayer. He never prayed after Jamu'a prayer till he departed, from the mosque, and then he would pray two rak'at at home. Sahih al-Bukhari 937 Reference 11 Hadith 61 Sahih al-Bukhari. Friday Prayer Narrated Saul bin Sa'di. There was a woman amongst us who had a farm and she used to sow silk, a kind of vegetable, on the edges of streams in her farm. On Fridays she used to pull out the silk from its roots and put the roots in a utensil. Then she would put a handful of powdered barley over it and cook it. The roots of the silk were a substitute for meat. After finishing the Jamu'a prayer we used to greet her and she would give us that food which we would eat with our hands, and because of that meal, we used to look forward to Friday. Sahih al-Bukhari 938 Reference 11 Hadith 62 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Saul As above with the addition We never had an afternoon nap nor meals except after offering the Jamu'a prayer. Sahih al-Bukhari 939 Reference 11 Hadith 63 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Anas We used to offer the Jamu'a prayer early and then have the afternoon nap. Sahih al-Bukhari 940 Reference 11 Hadith 64 Sahih al-Bukhari Friday Prayer Narrated Saul we used to offer the Jamu'a prayer with the Prophet and then take the afternoon nap. Sahih al-Bukhari 941 Reference 11 Hadith 65